um, I get approached uh, all the time regarding um, helping with looking at financing or looking at budgeting for um, persons at home or people who want to start investing since they start to make a little bit more money and they want to start looking into mutual funds and IRAs and things like that. But my first question to them always is, what is in your savings account? Um, that is any true staple for any financial planner that is worth their salt is they're going to make sure that you have money in the bank for uh, expenses. Okay. Um, most rules of thumb, depending on which um, advisor that you're, you're dealing with, most of them um, want you to have at least three months worth of expenses in your, in your account. Um, and that's in a savings account, something that you have direct access to, um, don't have to sell off any assets or anything like that. And why that's important is, um, you know, everything, you know, things happen. So um, car goes down, kid gets hurt. Uh, sometimes you lose your job, you know, relocation, downsizing, whatever. Um, you need to have access to funds that you can get to um pretty easily without having to liquidate an asset. When I say liquidate an asset, I'm meaning um, sell off a stock, sell off some mutual funds, sell your home, uh, those type of things. Because when you are having to rush to make a decision in order to get access to cash, you're not always making the best decision for yourself or for that particular investment. So that's why you want to have what we call liquid assets, which are things that, that don't really tied to any um, time frame or asset or uh, market vol volatility. So those things are like, you know, checking accounts, saving accounts, um, CDs to a certain extent, uh, nothing probably past 24 months, um, uh, money market accounts, things like that. So those things um, are what we're talking about when we're talking about, about budgeting and and um, having liquid savings, right? So me, I personally like uh, my benchmark is at least three months. So uh, when I say three months of living expenses, you basically break down everything that you have to pay each month, car note, mortgage, daycare, uh, you want to budget in food, you want to budget in gas, uh, whatever it is that you're looking for or wanting to do, you want that in there. Okay, whatever that number may be, say that's, you know, 3000 a month to uh, sustain your household each month. If that's the case, then you need at least minimum $9,000 in your savings account in order to access on some type of emergency. OK, um, again, these are things that we're talking about. Loss of job, car going down, kid getting hurt and, you know, having to do the deductible. Things like I said that that no one can predict or even truly plan for. But you have the assets um, available to you if something like that happens. OK, so in order to get there, how do you put all the, those plans in together. And that's kind of where we're at with the budgeting one-on-one. -on -one. Um, most households should have a, a, a budget. If you're not budgeting, um, then you're kind of doing yourself a disservice. A lot of times clients have no clue uh, of where their money is going. And sometimes I've even had people that don't even know actually how much they make. Um, I ask them, you know, what's your yearly income? And they can't give me an answer. Um, uh, right off the top of the head, or they got to, you know, check, you know, what they um, did on their on their taxes or something to that effect. So um, that is a, de a detriment to yourself because you want to know what's coming in and what's going out. Because if you don't know those things, you can't properly budget and you can't properly plan for the future. So real quick, uh, for those that um, don't know. Um, how to calculate like a yearly salary or they don't know exactly how much they make uh, per month. We're going to try something new, a um, little whiteboard. So hopefully y'all can see that. So if you get paid weekly, your, uh -oh, let me see how we do this. All right. So if you get paid your gross salary right here, if you get paid weekly, 
then you want to multiply whatever your, your gross paycheck by 52. So it's 52 weeks in a year. Obviously, you just multiply that, bam, that's how much you make per year. If you get paid biweekly, you just split that in half. So that means if you get paid every other Friday, you're getting paid 26 times per month. So you just multiply that by 26. Now, if you get paid um, twice per month, like on the 1st and the 15th, then obviously you're only doing it twice per month. So it's about 24. And then for my teachers out there, obviously you get paid monthly. So it's just a quick 12-month uh, calculation by your your gross pay. And that's how you come up with your um, with your uh, your yearly income. Right? So with that being said, once you know how much you're actually bringing home, um, then you want to find out what's going out. So you want to look at your expenses or look at your bank account and see what you're spending your money on. And we're going over a couple of tips on how to get that done, how to effectively put a good budget together. Uh, but you definitely want to know what you're spending and where your money is going because that's how you're going to be able to adjust and be able to save. We all see those uh, memes and things that come out at the beginning of the year, how you can save a dollar each week and end up coming up with about $1,300 at the end of the month. Or, you know, I even have, and I'll put that out there um, shortly, how you can actually save $5,000 fairly easy in less than a year. But those that are truly um, looking to getting to a home, um, there isn't a way to save less than $200 a month um, uh, to get to where you want to be um, as far as having enough money to close on, on the house. Now, again, we'll get into that later because we're just talking about budgeting today, but how much do you need to actually get into a home? There's multiple programs that we're going to talk about in the next coming weeks. But right now we want to create the discipline of budgeting because that's the base of anything. I can't advise you on how to get a home. I can't advise you on what, what stocks to buy. I can't advise you on what mutual fund works best if you're not have the discipline and the ability to save money and save money on a, a consistent and regular basis. So uh, creating a budget allows you and helps you with that. Okay. So how do you create a budget? Again, find out what your, your take home is and then you want to categorize every expense that you have. So your mortgage, your um, uh, your car note, your daycare. You wanna lock some things for food. You wanna lock some things for gas, those type of things, right? And then, and everybody's budget is gonna be different. Everybody has different expenses, you know. Thank God I don't have a daycare bill budget anymore. So that's now no longer in my budget. So that's not a part of what I do anymore. So that line is, has now been removed from my budget. Okay. But for those that have kids that have after school care or daycare, that's going to be in your budget. Okay. So once you categorize everything as far as what you spend out, then you want to maneuver them between things that are fixed and things that are adjustable. Okay. When I say fixed, things that have to be paid. Car note, mortgage, lights, you know, uh, water, all those things that, you know, if you don't pay, get cut off, okay? Then you have things that are adjustable, things that you have control over, depending on, you know, the household. You know, uh, these things are like groceries, gas, entertainment, um, cable, for those that, you know, are thinking about cutting the cords, those type of things, travel, uh, those things that you have full control over and can adjust according to the budget, right? Once you put all those things together, you want to look at your budget or create a budget every month. So you want to find out what's coming in and know what's coming in at the beginning of the month and the way it's scheduled to come out for that month, right? So after you schedule what is supposed to come out, then you make your adjustments, okay? Hey, just want to thank you guys for tuning in this week's episode of Finance Fridays. If you like the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, this is Stephen Thomas with Refine Realty, where the advice is free, but the knowledge is priceless. See y'all next week.